People's Court with the Cutlers. This is the case of white versus white. You all have been married for four years. You've got three kids, one on the way. And Mr. White, you say allegations of cheating are destroying your relationship. Why are you here today? I'm here to defend my honor and to prove my innocence because my wife is sitting here that accuses me of cheating constantly because she is a chronic cheater. She has cheated in the past and she's just trying to put it on me because I've went as far as getting DNA tests done on all the kids, even the ones she's pregnant with because of the infidelity. All right. Well, Miss White, are you accusing your husband of cheating? Yes, I am, Your Honor, because he was sleeping with his ex-boss. Like, I found text messages with him sleeping with his old boss. And that's the reason he's here trying to prove his innocence, to say, I did not do that. Yes. All right, Mr. White, uh, you say she's cheated in the past. How do you know that? I've sat there and seen text messages in between her and other guys. She's sent erotic pictures to guys. They've sent it to her. And I went as far as following her on Valentine's Day to another guy's house. All right, Miss White, did this occur? Yes, it has, but I have confessed to everything. He has forgiven me for everything that I've done. He's still around, and I don't think it's right for him to keep throwing everything in my face when this... We're not here about me today. We're, we're here about him. Well, and to that point, he is saying that it's because of frankly, guilt that you have that you're saying he's cheating. Is there any merit to his argument that you are, in fact, accusing him because of this past? I have found text messages and seen that he was texting his old manager and was saying how beautiful she was and he wanted to be with her. And I had confronted this lady, his boss, about it, and she admitted to hanging out with him while my sister was laying on her deathbed and they were drinking, but they had denied that they had ever done anything besides just hang out, but I still don't believe either one of them. I think more happened that night than... Do you have any evidence of this conversation? Yes, I do, Your Honor. Okay. Ron, would you please get yes, that, please? Thank you, ma'am. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Ron. Yes, Your Honor. From Mr. White, can I come over? Not right now. What about your wife? I like you. You're beautiful. So, Mr. White, are you having these text message conversations with other women? Yes, I was having the text messages with her, but I was... It was more just to show her how it felt a little bit. Because... But two wrongs I, don't make a right, and you still shouldn't have been yes. sitting there texting your boss right. that you're supposed to be providing. I think your wife has a point. Two wrongs don't make a right, love. <laughs> Well, Miss White, do you believe he's cheated with any other women? I've caught him having other women in our apartment. Um, he has admitted to kissing other girls, um, but nothing ever led there that he admitted to. You know, Mr. White, you came in with the appearance of a choir boy. <laughs> but now I'm hearing all this here, and it's like, okay. So, have you kissed other women? I've kissed one other woman. That is the correction. I've kissed one girl. And I took... When we got married, I took my vows seriously. I have not cheated on her. I haven't done anything. She has sat here and go through my phone when I go to sleep. She's even has went as far as I come home and she thinks that I've been gone too long at work. She'll start like she's going to give me oral and smell my private area to see if it smells like another female. <laughs> Okay, so this lack of trust that you all have stems from your belief or the fact that she's cheated in the past, and now because of that, you think he's cheating on you. Yes. So here's the thing. Did you go to your boss's house? Yes, I went to my boss's house. We were drinking whiskey and hanging out and talking, and she went to touch my leg, and I said, I can't do this, and I immediately left. Okay. So, did your boss invite you over, or did you ask to go over? I just asked to come over. Hey, call the boss up. Call the boss up. Boss? Yes? Can I come over? Yeah. Boss <laughs> says yes. Okay. All right. And that's, then, that's a good boss for you. That's a good boss. All right. And you, you knew. all have been flirting before. Yes. Okay. So, it looks like this. All right, you flirting with the boss. 
Hey. You know, hey, how are you? I'm good. How are you? Doing all right. All right. Yeah. So what you doing later? I don't know. What should I be doing later? Oh. <laughs> I, I got some work for you to do. Oh. And then the music plays. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, there yeah, you go. Yeah, music, deal, deal. Yeah. All right, so the music plays. So you going over to your boss's house with one thing in mind. She's expecting you to come over with one thing in mind. You get there. The scene is set. You're drinking. You're talking. You're hanging out. You apparently are slow to make a move because she has to put her hand on your leg. And at that moment... He pulls out. You... Well... <laughs> oh, ah. Nice to know. Nice to know. All right. All right. So at that moment, you decide, you know what, mm, this isn't right. Is that what you're telling us? Yeah, I, it might sound a little wrong, but I started thinking of my kids and what would happen if something did happen that they wouldn't see their father, possibly, and they need their father and mother. They don't just need one or the other. So what we have here is the husband's side, the wife's side, and the boss lady's side. She's here right now. Oh. Ron, would you please escort our next witness in, please? Yes, Your Honor. Mr. White, you look pretty nervous. I'm not nervous, ma'am. Oh, you sure? Yeah. All right. Hey, homewrecker. Oh. Good day. How are you? I'm fine. How are you, Your Honor? Right. Would you state your name for the court, please? My name is Molly Messer. Ms. Messer, you are Mr. White's boss or former boss? Yes, former boss. Okay. At the time he was working for you, did you know he was married? I did. She would come to the restaurant from time to time, and he confided in me in the marriage problems that they were having. Well, that's still none of your business. You should have been managing him, not... Well, you should have been screwing around and he wouldn't have been confiding That's in me. That's not your business. You should have stayed well, out of it. You got kids of your own. It's my turn to talk. It's not your turn to talk. Anyways, he confided in me the problems they were having in their marriage. From my understanding, he was going to leave her because she was being unfaithful to him. So what was the nature of your relationship? I wouldn't call it a relationship. I would call it a situationship because it started out... It started out professional. It led to a flirtation, but it lasted about a month. Uh, you know. Mr. White has testified he was interested in you. Were you interested in him? I was, in a way, but there, there's too much baggage to that, man. Like, it, it wasn't even worth it to me. Then he shouldn't have even started it in the first place. You should have just kept mad. Again, I'm not talking to you. They're, I don't they're care. talking to me. They're not talking to you. I don't care, so you need to stay out of my family's business. Miss well, Messer, Miss Messer. You wouldn't have problems if you wouldn't have been the home record that you were. I admitted that what I did was wrong, but that's something okay, that you well, should have Okay, well, that's good. That's good. I'm glad you admitted what you was doing was wrong, because it is wrong. Miss Messer? Yes. Were you attracted to him? Yes, I was. Are you still attracted to him? No, I'm not. Tell me what a situationship is, for the record. Okay. Well, I call it a situationship because there is more than, like, what she's telling you. This girl caused me to lose my job and everything. She kept calling, calling the head person over me, talking about I was having relationship with employees, not just, not just him, employees. She ended up causing me to lose my job. I lost my house. I lost, I lost a lot due to her and her drama. You're saying Miss White actually cost you my your job. job. Yes, she did. Your livelihood. So she has costed me a lot. Like, I've had a lot of issues for the past two years just over this. Did you ever have any direct communication with Ms. White? I did, and it was like two or three times. Like I said, she kept calling, she kept calling, wanting to know whatever, which I've denied, you know, I denied allegations of what was going on. So, Mr. White has testified that he came over to your home. Is that correct? That's correct. And that you all drank. Correct. And he says that nothing happened. See, I'm here to clear the air and say that, yes, we did have sex. It was one time and we were drunk. But we haven't had any relations since then. We haven't talked since two months after, and that was just to clear the air because we were drunk. We, I mean, neither one of us won each other. 
Okay, Miss White has testified that you told her that you all did not have sex. Oh, yes, that's what I told her. I'm here to clear the air because this has been two years and it's kind of crazy that you should have cleared the air going when on. I first told you. So something. you are Instead saying that you actually did have sex with Mr. Yes. White. Did you have sex with Miss Messer? No, we did not. We did not have sex. I don't know where this is coming from or nothing. We did not have sex at all at any point in time. And again, you went over there with the intention of doing that. Yes, Your Honor. And she was receiving you into her home with the intention of doing that. Yes, Your Honor. Okay. Why and she's testified that you did. We did not. So the only missing piece in this whole puzzle is you saying we didn't. We did not. Why would she lie? Why would she come here and lie? I don't know. I guess she's wanting to get revenge back on my wife and end the marriage because where she lost everything, she's wanting to make her feel the pain. Ms. Messer, why did you wait till now to tell this truth? Because when I denied the allegations in the beginning, it was because I did not want to lose my job. And, I mean, what's the point now? She's done calls me to lose the job. And it's been two years. Maybe it'll give her some closure. You should have came clean two years ago and then it would have evolved, like... Wow. This won't be coming up now, like... Well, like I said, so you, you didn't come right out ago. and say that you cheated. Now, did you? No, you didn't. It's none of your business well, what I do with my family. You got well, your own family, worry about your own He problem. made it my business. Well, Ms. Messer, that's none of his, her business either. You should have stayed Ms. out. Ms. White, thank you. Ms. Messer? Yes. This is not about spite. This is about you wanting to clear the air. Exactly. All right. Well, to find out if Mr. White has cheated, the court engaged the services of a licensed private investigator and polygraph examiner, Kendall Schull. Ron, can you please escort Mr. Schull into the courtroom? Yes, Sean. How are you, Mr. Schull? Good, Your Honor. How are you? We're good. Okay, we have heard two different sides of the story today, and so we really need your help. Mr. White has said he has not had sex and did not have sex with his boss, Ms. Messer. Ms. Messer is here on the stand and has testified under oath that they, in fact, did have sex the one night that he went over to her home. So we need your help. You asked Mr. White, have you ever had sexual intercourse with Ms. Messer? What was his response? He said, no. What did the lie detector determine? The lie detector determined that he was being truthful, Your Honor. <laughs> Mr. White, you have this look on your face. What is that? It, uh, it proofs right there in the test. Ms. Messer? Yes. The lie detector results show that you all did not have sexual relationship. Yes. All right. Are you just being spiteful? Yes, because like I said, she has caused me <laughs> to lose everything that I own, like my house, my job, over nothing. And I hope for that short period of time that you thought he slept with me, that it hurt you the way you've hurt him and the way you've hurt me. You're still a homework and slut. Right. No. All right. Out All right. With him. Now, you realize this is a court of law. I realize that, yes. And you were under oath to tell the truth. Yes. And you deliberately lied. Yes. For spite. Yes, correct. You do realize you can be held in contempt of court. Yes, I realize that. And all the penalties associated with that, including jail. Right. And you're comfortable with that. In a way, I... I'm not gonna say that I'm comfortable with that, but... In my opinion, it was well worth it because, like I said, she caused me to lose everything. Right. So you did not sleep no. with Mr. White? No. And that is the truth? That's the truth. Wow. So she caused me to lose everything over nothing. She should have went with it. When I told her in the beginning that we, didn't have, that we didn't have sex, she should have believed that. She shouldn't have called and called and called my boss and had me lose my job and then lose my home and lose everything else that I had. Mr. Shull, you asked Mr. White, other than what your wife is already aware of, have you had physical sexual contact with another woman? What was his response to that question? He said, no. What did the lie detector determine? The lie detector determined that he was being truthful. <laughs> so, Ms. 
So, Mr. White, maybe you are a choir boy. <laughs> I wouldn't go that far as saying I'm a choir boy, but when I take something serious, I take it serious. Miss right. White, how are you feeling right now? I'm relieved that now we can start moving past everything and work on it. He's forgiven me. I can forgive him. All right. All right. Yeah. You all have a bright future. You have a baby on the way. You have children already. You all have got to develop some trust and learn how to agree to disagree sometimes. But you also learn, have to learn how when you don't agree on something, you don't run, you don't get mad, you don't go be with somebody else. You learn how to fight through those moments. Mm -hmm. Cullen and I have learned to fight fairly. What he does is he takes his corner, I take mine, and when we can talk civilly, we do. And then we come up with a plan to move forward. You owe it to yourselves, you owe it to your children, so that you can have a happy, healthy marriage. As we say in this courtroom, do not cheat yourself out of a chance to have a happy relationship. Court is adjourned.